We cannot linger for long on the grand jury decision in the Eric Garner case. It's done and over. While the protests continue and the Justice Department gears up, time cannot be wasted to examine how we now go forward from both of the sides of law enforcement and the community and the people and how everybody deals with cops under all circumstances. We must move this conversation forward, but we still have to look at what got us here in certain aspects. Let's welcome back to Midpoint, retired Los Angeles Police Department Sergeant and author of the book detailing her experiences, Black and Blue, the creation of a manifesto, Cheryl Dorsey. Sergeant, good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Ed. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you. What's become part of the discussion here in the last few hours, last 24 hours, is looking at the video from the Eric Garner incident. And people are now pointing to the fact that in the foreground, you can see a police sergeant who is there, an African-American female sergeant who is there, who does nothing to stop what is going on. You've been in these cases. You were a sergeant. You were somebody on location. What happened here? And why, in your opinion, did the sergeant not stop what was going on? Well, clearly what happened is that she didn't do her job, right? As a supervisor, you're expected to make the tough decisions decisions. You're expected to control that situation. And so why she didn't step in and control those officers and stop that uh, pack mentality that we watched as five or six officers swarmed one man is beyond me. And the fact that she's an African-American woman is even more disconcerting. Is she a go-along to get-along kind of officer? Was she afraid because she's in the minority in terms of her gender and her ethnicity? I'm bothered by that. Is that maybe what it is here, that you're talking about someone who says, look, I better just go along with this because I don't want my job put at risk, my career put at risk, simply because I am black and I am a female? Well, that's certainly part of the police culture, and so we understand that. But again, she's a sergeant of police, and she took that position knowing that she was going to have to make a tough decision, an unpopular decision. And evidently, she said, I'm ready and I'm up for the task because she put those stripes on her sleeve. Does it not then lead us to believe that not only the sergeant, but the officers and other police, law enforcement officials who are out there, that they're not ready for this, that they're pushed up too fast, that maybe they're promoted too quickly? Something's wrong if you don't have people able, you're telling them to make decisions, and they're not able to. Something's wrong with that process. Well, you know, we see this all the time. Certainly, I saw this here on LAPD, where you have officers who are rising stars, and they move up through the system rather quickly when they really have no experience to fall back on. They have few years in patrol, and it's important to be a patrol officer before you're expected to supervise officers in patrol, because if you don't understand that system, then you wind up with someone who does just what this sergeant did, which is stand by and let your officers control a highly charged, overly aggressive situation. How do we then, I got about a minute 30 left here, move forward from this point and start some sort of a rational discussion? Well, there's got to be additional training for sure, and we've got to get into the heads of these officers that are working the streets. We need to have a reevaluation, in my opinion, and find out wh wh what's going on with you. How do you view people? Where's your humanity? Where's your compassion? Where's your empathy? Because if you lack all of that, you should not be dealing with the public on a day-to-day -day basis. Do we need to have better psych evaluations? Absolutely. And we need to have them on a regular and ongoing basis to review someone initially coming on a police department and expose them to the things that you see in patrol day in and day out and not reevaluate them every two or three years is problematic, in my opinion. Sergeant, 30 seconds left. Are we also at a point where the community needs to understand that in some cases don't exacerbate a situation under any circumstances when you're confronted with police? My best advice is always to do what an officer tells you, because if you find yourself like Eric Garner did, being the victim of contempt of cop, which means you made me mad, and now if you're going to pay, um, you see that you will lose every time. And so citizens need to go along until you can get to a safe environment and you can lodge a complaint through a different process. Well put, contempt of cop. Let's remind everybody again that... Sergeant Dorsey's book is Black and Blue, The Creation of a Manifesto. She's nice enough to join us from time to time and lend us her expertise. Sergeant, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ed. I enjoy you. Talk My to pleasure. you soon. Take care. Next up, Telling It Like It Is moves the racial discourse in America conversation forward in seeking out similarities and differences in three police shootings. It's next on Midpoint.